Hi, my name is Sarah, and welcome back to Freshly Read Books. So I was having a hard time thinking that I needed to film a video this weekend and then also be trying to read the International Booker books before the shortlist is announced on Thursday. Not that I have to read any of these before the shortlist is announced, it's just that I was hoping to have read some before that point so that I could have more opinions than I currently do, which is like none. But then I realized that, that I could just take you along on the journey of reading these books this weekend as much as I can get through. I don't expect to get through a ton of them, but they are very short books, so I think that I can get through at least like two or three, maybe? Fingers crossed. So I do have D&D in eight minutes and I'm gonna attempt to film this intro before that time, but basically this weekend I just want to spend any of my spare time that I have with Booker, which is really most of my time is spare time, so it should work out well. So I have these five books currently that are from the long list and then I have one more that I don't know if it'll actually get here this weekend so it might just not at all be involved in this video but there is one that's on its way to me. So these books are An Inventory of Losses. Uh, at Night All Blood is Black. I was trying to remember the title because it's blocked by my library thing. The Dangers of Smoking in Bed. Uh, when we cease to understand the world and the perfect nine this is the book that i am currently most reading although i've started uh, an inventory of losses this is the first book that got to me from the library and i've actually read a tiny bit of it which is really just the preamble and the preface and i started like some of the actual book itself. And then Dangers of Smoking in Bed, this is a short story collection and I've read two out of I think the 12 short stories in this and I am enjoying it but like as far as my focus it's right now on The Perfect Nine. I think I just got like too excited when I kept getting books in the library so I just kept picking up like the next one and the next one and the next one so <laughs> but this is the one that I actually plan on finishing first out of these uh, as I am getting close to halfway through at this point, it is written in verse, prose. Somebody needs to teach me the difference between those because clearly it didn't stick when I learned it in high school. So The Perfect Nine is about a, um, it's like the, re not retelling, but like uh, an expounding on a legend that is present in Kenya about the start of a group of people, which I can't remember the name of the people. It starts with a G. I'm sure it'll come up later. Um, <laughs> and they like are supposed to have originated from two people who have uh, 10 daughters who are called the perfect nine. I don't know if there's something I'm not getting that 10 daughters equals perfect nine but if there is and i'm just like not understanding it i've tried googling it but everything that comes up is just like hey read this book and i'm like yeah i know i am but i still don't get it <laughs> I, <laughs> earlier i had basket case by green day stuck in my head and i was humming it now i can hear curtis humming it in the hallway <laughs> okay so 10 daughters and they're looking for suitors for each of them and the 10 daughters cover the 10 clans, although sometimes it says nine clans, but it did describe 10. So I, I don't know. So far I've been enjoying it. I like how like feminist it is, how like female empowering it is. Um, I think that that's pretty cool that it focuses on that because I think it could very easily be like the marrying off of women. And I don't know how like the original legend is told, but it seems to when like you see the reviews and stuff on the back it really concentrates on like how amazing it is that it's telling it in this way so i'm assuming that it wasn't um but then again like i don't know i don't have that history i don't have that background uh knowledge but personally i'm enjoying it i do find books that do what this book is doing which is essentially like taking some ancient mythology thing and then like expounding upon it or adding some to it I tend to not like those books, like Circe, for example, by Madeline Miller. I really didn't like that book. I, like, almost the entire time I found it just, like, rambling and, like, I had no idea what the point was and, like, what we were trying to get to and if there were messages, I wasn't picking them up because, like, a book can have, like, 
you can have no idea where a book is going and it could still like be good. You don't have to know what the goal of the book is. But then I want to be like getting something like in the middle parts. <laughs> if I if I don't if there's nothing that I'm like looking forward to, I'd like for there to be some substance where I currently am and I just didn't feel like it had any of that. I'm sorry if you really love that book because I feel like a lot of people really love that book. But this book, although it is kind of a similar idea where it's like taking ancient mythology and it's building upon it, I think that this is great. I understand like what is going on, <laughs> but also what the end goal is, I guess, for these people and like what we're building towards. And so it makes like the journeys feel more exciting and like there's higher stakes when I know what the purpose of the journey is and it's not just like a journey for journey's sake. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? I feel like a lot of like mythological books are like, here we are on this journey forever. And you're like, okay, but like why though? But anyways, I am enjoying this one. So I'm happy about that. Now it is 6.30 and I have D&D &D and uh, I'm gonna be late. Okay, um, but I will update you later when I've read more of this. I'm hoping to finish it tonight, maybe. We'll see. red and shiny my face is, I went for a run and then I took a shower. So this is where we're at. So do you have the time to listen to me whine about nothing and everything all at once? Yeah, I still have basket case stuck in my head. So, and you know what? I'm not mad about it. Um, but why I really started filming, my battery's gonna die. That's fun. Be right back. And we're back, hopefully with the same angle as before. So, what you're actually here for, let's talk Booker books. Um, so last night I ended up, we ended up playing Jackbox instead of D&D &D because Roll20 crashed like five minutes into our game. So that was very fun. And then I kind of just chatted with uh, Casey for a while, Casey from the podcast that I do, if you don't know about that. It's at the very bottom of the description of all my videos. And then after that, I ended up staying up way late, uh, just like doing nothing, like watching YouTube videos. I mean, reading too. I was, I did read, but I didn't finish The Perfect Nine last night, which is originally what I hoped to do, but I did finish it pretty early this morning. I mean, early, that is the wrong word. I didn't wake up until 11 this morning because I stayed up until like two last night which isn't really like me. I don't typically stay up that late, but yeah, so I stayed up until two, slept until 11, and then after that woke up and finished The Perfect Nine, which I really liked. I thought the second half was a lot better than the first half. I, I think that the first half felt so much like, like there was a lot of setup obviously, and you don't really get to know any of the characters. I mean, like it gives you these like brief s rundowns of what each character is like, I guess, but it's really just like, here, I can even give you an example because I'm pretty sure I could find this very quickly. Yep, boom. Like about this daughter, she loves work, says it never killed anybody. She cherishes personal freedom and self-reliance 
so much that those driven by envy call her selfish. It's like a where you can't why <laughs> lighting. Okay, you can kind of see this. So this is about like one daughter. This is about another daughter, and so like that's the introductions you get to each of the daughters, uh, each of the ten daughters, and. So like it's something, but also you learn about all 10 of them at the same time and it's hard to keep them apart. Once we got like further along, there were certain characters that it talked more about or that were playing larger parts of the story so that it was easier to kind of follow. And I uh, like I appreciated those areas a lot more. And I think that they're like it's very quotable because it does like it has the feeling of being like ancient mythology where like you can pull out lines really easily that almost sound like proverbs or um i can't think of the right word but hopefully you know what i mean so here is one of my favorites that was just like a nice little succinct quote uh, for it is true the word locked up inside cannot win an argument i think that that's such a good quote and it's so simple and it's so like yes of course but it's like when you get into an argument and there's like something beneath the surface that's really the root of the argument and maybe the what you're actually saying is you know something that's more tangible to talk about or easier to talk about or argue but you're never going to achieve what you're hoping to achieve if you can't figure out why you're really having the argument in the first place you know so if there's something unspoken that's never going to be resolved if you're not going to speak it and like that's one of those things where it's like yes obviously that makes sense but the way that it's put is so succinct and so nice and there's a lot there's tons of instances like that that was just my favorite one so overall i think it was good it's just tough because when a book is written like this i feel like you just don't get as much character development and or not even character development but the characters feel very two-dimensional where you just know who they are and they are the way that they are because they are you know what i mean which i think is really like it's not it's no fault of the book it's that's just the way those types of stories are told, but it's something that I personally don't love, which I think this book really helped me understand more about like what I don't like about books that are expounding on mythology or, or myths or things like that. Like I understand more now why those don't connect with me. And I think it's because the characters just don't connect with me as much. And it took having a book that otherwise I really liked to be able to understand like what the disconnect there was for me. So I'm actually super thankful for this book and for having read this book because of that. And even still, I liked it. And I'm glad that I read it for like completely different reasons of just like enjoyment and it, it's a good book. So then I read like another story in The Dangers of Smoking in Bed. So I'm three stories in, but I don't think I talked about what this one was about last night when I was like doing the introduction to the video. Basically it's like 12 stories that are supposed to be very macabre and dark and grotesque maybe. Horrifying I think is a word that's used in the synopsis. And so far, having read three of them, I think that each of them does have like a little element of that, but it's not nearly as extreme as I was expecting. So far, I'm really enjoying this one. I don't typically just like sit down and read through several short stories, uh, although that is like my favorite thing to take on a plane ride for some reason, is like a short story collection. <laughs> I don't understand that opinion in myself, I just know it exists. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm just going to like sit down and go through each story, but I think that I will read a few more of them at least. So either the goal is to just like get through all of these stories today and have this finished as well, or maybe like get to the halfway point so have finished six stories or something in it and then switch to at night all blood is black mostly because i'm just really excited to read this one and it's like very short so i don't know i'm kind of torn right now 
Um, but I think I'll just continue reading this until I get to the point where I'm like, oh, I don't really feel like starting a new short story, like just to have it end because I think that I do reach that, which is why I tend to not read them all in one day. And so if I get to that point, then I'll switch it up. If not, I'll stick with it. But yeah, so far I am enjoying it and I'm excited to read more of them. I, I feel like I always think with short stories, there has to be like this greater message or something in, in each of the stories. And I don't think that's necessarily the case, but I, I always go into them like looking for, for that. And I think I need to kind of let go of that. That being said, I'm sure there is, like maybe there is a meaning to these ones that I just like don't understand. Like I follow the story perfectly well and it's not inaccessible in any way. It's, they're very accessible stories to read. There are like a bit like more gross parts, I guess, um, that maybe some people would have a hard time reading, but I, I have to say I'm very squeamish, like incredibly squeamish and I'm having really no no trouble at all. There's like probably a couple times where my face was like Ooh, reading it, <laughs> but it wasn't like to the point where I was really grossed out. It's just that my face makes reactions to things, um, but never to the point where I ever considered like putting it down. And any time that it would get to that, it would very quickly be over. Yeah, maybe at the end of this, I don't typically, I feel like I never talk about short story collections and I have no idea how to do it. Maybe at the end of this, I'll like just talk through, I'll just talk about what my favorite ones were. That seems like a good idea. Um, also, I decided to listen to an audiobook of one of the Booker books because I found out that on through Libby, I could get Minor Details, the audiobook. And uh, Libby, if you don't know, is an app that you can connect to your library and then you can get books either as ebooks or audiobooks depending on what they have available. But yeah, so I used that and it's free because <laughs> it's through your library. You get it. Anyways, um, so I ended up listening to a little bit of minor details. I don't have a, a lot to say about it because honestly, it hasn't even reached a part that I thought would be at the beginning because of how the synopsis worked out, which is basically that, um, if I can remember correctly, which it's been a bit since I talked about this and filmed that video where I talked through all the synopses, but it's about a uh, girl who is, like a teenage girl who is assaulted by two officers, I think, in Palestine, and then a woman like years later about in the present day learning about this and becoming like really obsessed with the story of this teenager i think i think that that's what it's about but so far like i haven't gotten to anything that's really referenced in the synopsis so maybe i'm misremembering or something but uh, and also i'm not very far into it it feels like I'm nothing into it, but all the books it seems on the Booker, on the International Booker are short. I think there's one or maybe two that are a little longer. Um, but so technically I'm 10% of the way into this book. So I plan on just like listening to that audiobook when I can. I'm gonna cook breakfast in a little bit and I'll probably listen to it more while I do that since I can't be reading physically anyway. So it'll work out great. And then I can be making more progress in Booker. My, my full weekend is gonna just be all about International Booker and it's gonna be great. Or I guess Jackbox Games. Those are the two things I'm allowed to think about. Jackbox Games, International Booker. Um, so I am going to read more of The Dangers of Smoking in Bed, cook some breakfast, and I will check in with you when I have a new update. Okay, so I have not 
I don't think talk to the camera all day, which isn't good, my bad. So I just wanted to give a quick update before I go to bed for tonight about, I mean, I think I showed like some parts of my day, but reading wise, let's talk about it. And I think I'm gonna do like a full wrap up tomorrow because right now it's like 11 and I'm tired and I wanna go to bed. Uh, last night I continued reading The Dangers of Smoking in bed and then I read more of it today. And so now I think I'm in the seventh story at this point and still liking it. I think I wanted to give like a, this is my favorite story so far. And maybe I'll save that for tomorrow because I feel like I still have to think about it and I'll probably finish the seventh story at least tonight in bed before falling asleep. So yeah, maybe I'll save that for then and then I can give my favorite or maybe my top two out of the first seven stories for that. And I'm out of focus. Oh, there we go. Focus. Okay. Anyways. Ugh. So uh, another big update was Minor Detail which I started yesterday. I read a little bit or listened to a little bit more of it yesterday after filming, after like the last update that I did. And then I made quesadillas today with some leftover pulled pork and I listened to it. I was able to finish minor detail through that. However, listening to that while I'm like trying to cook was hard because all I wanted to do was like crawl up into a little ball and sob. <laughs> I do have more thoughts on this, but I'll save them for tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, so I did finish that one, which is good because I meant that I finished two books, two Booker books from the long list this weekend, that and The Perfect Nine, which we already talked about. And so I'm happy about that. <laughs> but I was hoping for like three books, but that works. Um, I did also start uh, At Night All Blood is Black. And this one, I'm like a third of the way into. And I was planning on just like going through this one today, but then as I continued to just like be reading it in one sitting, I started feeling more and more like I wasn't giving the book the time it deserved mentally. And there's so much like packed into such short amounts of time and they're like themes on themes on themes and we all know how I feel about themes. <laughs> I could probably talk about this book for a long time. I definitely see myself doing a book review on this one. Um, also, that's a good point. If there's any specific book that you know that I'm reading or you know is on the long list and you're really hoping that I will specifically do a review for that book or you're not seeing a lot of people reviewing it and so you'd like me to review it, please let me know in the comments uh, and I will do my best to get to it. I don't think I'm going to be reviewing all 13 books. I know Kieran at Katie Books is planning on reviewing all 13, so head over there if you're looking for reviews. But yeah, I don't myself see see me even reading all 13, let alone reviewing all 13, and I don't know if I'm going to review every one that I read. So if there's one that you're really hoping for a review on, like a more in-depth review like I typically do, please do let me know. But that being said, I can definitely see myself doing one for At Night All Blood Is Black only being like a third of the way into this. It's so good. It's so good. It's so well written. I love the writing style. I love the imagery, even though at times it's like gross and disturbing. And, but oh my gosh, like I could, I'm a third of the way into this and I could see it winning for sure. Like on, on writing alone. I, ugh, I, I really like it. I feel like that's, I'm making that clear. I really like it. Well, with the weekend officially behind us, it's time to wrap up this video and talk about how I felt about these books. Now I'm being risky by doing this on a Monday night because Monday night is Curtis's game nights with his friends. So he is just on the other side of that wall playing Battlefield, I think. And I meant to have my wine, which is over here. Okay. Cheers to, I don't know, International Booker? So the reading that I did this weekend, uh, let's start with The Perfect Nine, which was the first book that I finished this weekend. And this followed a myth of a group of people that like came to be in Kenya 
and it basically is said to have started with two people then they had 10 daughters who are considered the perfect nine once again if somebody can explain to me how 10 makes a perfect nine let me know like is it just nine if it's nine and if you add one more then it's a perfect nine can i add one more and make it a perfect 10 is that just 11 <laughs> So this book is actually the one that I feel like I talked the most about already just because I had finished it and did like a little bit of a wrap up. But just to reiterate once again, I did really like this book. I think that it's a tough one for me just because it's a type of writing that I don't typically go for. Not that it's in verse, which I really do like, but that it is like an expounding on a myth or a legend and I am more and more coming to discover that I don't really like those things which is funny because my favorite part of history class was mythology but I was really bad at history class so I think that the mythology was like the most truly story-based portion of history so that's why I liked it so much <laughs> because in history class it was like my safe harbor so unfortunately because of that personal preference it made this book a little bit harder for me to fully enjoy that being said i think that if there were any book that were going to that was going to convince me to like that genre or that style not style um, but that type of writing then I think this is the book to do it because I can't imagine enjoying a book more than this one that's around that general idea. Then next I finished Minor Detail this weekend. So this book is kind of split into two parts. One being uh, a year after the war in Palestine slash Israel. These Israeli soldiers find this teenage, this Palestinian teenage girl and they do just unspeakable things to her and then they kill her and bury her and then the second part of the book takes place in a more modern day um, and follows a young woman who reads about this crime and is really wanting to learn more about it and the woman herself like already struggles with a few different things of her own and so I was surprised by how long it actually took to get to the point of the synopsis where it says she becomes obsessed with this crime because I feel like it's more clear as to why she gets obsessed and I don't even think obsessed is the right word because I don't I mean obviously she wants to learn more about it but obsession to me is like coming back to it after like long periods of time and I don't really see it as her doing that but she is very interested in learning more particularly because the person that originally wrote the article that she read that article is told from the Israeli soldiers perspective more than the woman's perspective and so she wants to know more about it to see if she can kind of piece together what this teenager was going through as this happened to her which I think is a bit unrealistic to expect like getting that information like getting information like being able to understand this from her perspective knowing that she does end up dying but still i wouldn't call it an obsession per se just super interested so i know that a lot of people have absolutely loved this book and i do think that it's really really good but i don't think that i'm quite on the same page as where everybody else is not that there's anything like that's not good about it like i don't really have any real complaints about it it's just that i don't think that it was like going above and beyond and becoming like this amazing book to me i would have loved if it was longer okay anyways <laughs> let's continue on uh next i read quite a bit of the dangers of smoking in bed which i had started before this weekend and read a couple stories from it i've read uh, quite a few more now over the weekend so i'm getting close to being done with it i've uh, i ended up reading more last night and i think i'm on the ninth story now which is the longest one which i didn't find out until i was like i'll read one more story after reading like two or three last night and then i started it and i was like how long is this like oh this one's 50 pages as opposed to like the 10 pages that all the other ones are yeah i'm on the ninth story of 12. so i've got three stories left including the one i'm in now 
and one of them being the actual name of the book. The second to last story is called The Dangers of Smoking in Bed, so I'm very curious to know what that one's about. But of the ones that I read, I think my favorite was probably Angelita Unearthed, which is actually the first story. Um, but, and I will say that these do get more, or at least as far as I've read so far, they get more and more grotesque and like give you that creep factor of like, Ugh. <laughs> which is what I expected from reading this book. It's supposed to be very macabre. And these are supposed to be like among the horror genre of just like gross. <laughs> And I think that it slowly gets more into that, like to where it gives you more of like the heebie-jeebies. But yeah, I think that that one's still my favorite. I did, oh, I liked the second one as well. Our Lady of the Quarry, The Well was good. I don't know, I think each of them like had a little something special, but overall I don't think that this is, oh, I don't know. I don't know what I think about it <laughs> because I'm enjoying myself reading this one a lot and I do really enjoy short stories in general, but I do think that it's just like lacking a little something for me, but I don't know what that is. So, <laughs> but I could see this being on the short list. Ow, I just hit myself with it. I don't know. I, I like that there's a lot of weird elements brought in, a lot of like kind of supernatural, not even a lot of, but just there are supernatural elements brought in. I just made eye contact with somebody outside my window. <laughs> it's a little weird. And the last book that I read was, uh, or not read, but like read some of this weekend was At Night All Blood is Black. And this one, I've not even read all of it. And I, I want this one to win. <laughs> I haven't even read all, like I've barely read any of the books and I haven't finished this one and already I want it to win. <laughs> I think this is done so well, at least for the part of it that I've read so far. So this is about a soldier in the French army during World War I and he sees his friend die and who he calls like, that he's more brother than brother or something, more than brother. <laughs> more brother than brother. He sees this man die and in like a very slow and painful way and he's begging him to just like finish it off, put him out of his misery. And Alpha, the main character, he's just not able to do it. And he regrets it like immediately afterwards. And he starts like completely questioning what it means to be a human, a soldier, a like free thinking being. And he talks about how like, the army like wants him to be and like everybody to be these savages and that they're trying to just get them to like turn it on to where they can just like run into battle and not care at all about their own lives and that he wants to like be this savage in his own way because if he's gonna have to do this like he'd rather have chosen to do it himself instead of like being told to do it and then just doing it and so he becomes almost like more of a savage than what they even want him to be. He'll like wait near the enemy camp and he'll kill one of them and he'll bring back their rifle attached and still attached to it the severed hand of the soldier and like at first everybody's like wow you're like you're doing it you're being everything they want us to be and more and like that's incredible and everything and nobody wants to know how he does it they all just are like good job and then like as it goes on they're starting to be like oh i don't know about this guy anymore he seems a little bit too much and i think that Overall, there's just like a lot of conversations that can be had just from like that little bit of information and the little bit that I've read so far. And I can't believe how much is packed into this tiny book that I'm not even like done with. And like just what's packed into half of this book. There's so much to talk about. It's incredible. And the writing is so good. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit too passionate about this. Yeah, I can't imagine, even at this point, liking one of the books more than this one, even though this wasn't, I mean, this was one of my most anticipated, but I would say this was maybe third or fourth down the list of my most anticipated. 
And at this point, I can't imagine another book meeting or exceeding how I feel about this one. Now, maybe I'll read the end of it and like everything will change, but I highly doubt it that that it could change enough to make me not feel the way I feel about it now. We'll see. So that was all the reading that I did this weekend. I'll still be trying to get to When We Cease to Understand the World very soon because this is uh, my second most anticipated read on the list. The employees being top, which by the way, I did find out a way to get a copy. Um, I'm a dummy that when looking at the website and I saw that it was using the pound sign on the money that I just like assumed that I couldn't buy it because that's what I went through with Burnt Sugar during the Booker Awards in 2020, <laughs> but I could. Um, and yeah, now I feel silly for saying that I couldn't get my hands on a copy of it because one is being sent to me now, which I'm excited about because that's the one that I most want to read. In addition, this tiny little guy came in the mail today, which is The War of the Poor. Um, can we just talk about how small this is? <laughs> because I knew it was going to be small. I knew this was the smallest book on the list, but I didn't think it was going to be this small. So yeah, I see myself getting through this one pretty quickly. But if there are any from the list that you definitely want me to read, uh, or any that you definitely want me to review and you're worried that even though I read it, I might not review it, please do let me know. I'm not gonna review every book that I read for the International Booker long list. So if you want me to review a specific one, please let me know and I will try my best to get to it. But with all that being said, I hope that you enjoyed coming on this Booker filled weekend with me and that you're excited to hear more about what I think about more of the books. I'm excited to hear what you think about the books. So if you read any of these or any of the other books and you wanna let me know about it, please do in the comments. I'd love to read them. I love being a part of the conversations around these books. I think they're so much fun because typically every book comes with a lot to talk about. So definitely leave those comments and I will see you in the next one. Bye.